so hello everyone so in this video we are going to talk about um about uh, breast pathology hope you guys have gone through the questions in instagram page easy medicine 003 so the case study today is about a 45 years old woman presented to the hospital with a chief complaint of breast swelling so when the patient has arrived to us with the complaint of breast swelling there are a few questions we need to ask the focal the focal questions on the swelling so all the questions have been posted in the instagram page actually so so you hope you guys have gone through it and then we discuss further here okay so uh, start with the differential diagnosis so once the patient has arrived to us with a breast swelling so what are the differential uh, to be in our mind is actually these are the seven common breast pathology the first one is actually I put here breast carcinoma because in all the patients we need to rule out the uh, breast carcinoma uh, the second one is pages disease which is usually associated with carcinoma next is fibrocystic disease breast disease fibroadenoma sorry fibroadenoma uh, and then mastitis breast abscess and then the next is ductal ectasia which is common in menopausal women so uh, I mean the common questions have already asked in in the Instagram so what are the other relevant questions focused on carcinoma is actually the risk factors so uh, to rule out I mean uh, to rule in uh, sorry uh, to rule rule in breast carcinoma there are several questions we need to ask regarding the risk factors the first one is about the early menarche which is uh, less than 12 years old late menopause after age of 55 naliparous means there is they have no kids childbirth uh, after the age of 30 and then they got kids but then she uh, never gave uh, breastfeeding and then family history of uh, any cancers previously or focus on breast carcinoma uh, previous cancer of the same of the same person uh, oral contraceptive pills uh, for pregnancy and um, uh, smoking alcohol history and obesity we need to check about it and age which is uh, about uh, I mean more than 40 years old and then this patient is actually 45 years old so it is common age for each group for the breast carcinoma apart from this risk factor we need to focus on systemic actually so systemic uh, systemic symptoms which could support our diagnosis so we need to ask about the weight loss anorexia uh, bony tenderness and reduced food intake so these are the symptoms would actually focus on carcinoma so once done with these questions moving forward to the physical examinations so physical examination would be a focus one first so we start from uh, i mean uh, for the breast i mean we'll will be look upon the breast uh, before that we need to uh, better to check on this obesity level actually uh, for the height and weight so for the physical examination start from inspection ask the patient actually to hold their hands by hip so uh, in that condition we can actually uh, see uh, the entire breast like uh, without any any uh, obstruction so the first one is actually we start from the common uh, description of the swelling where's the side how about the size and the shape the surface we need to check whether it's a pudy orange or any redness or ulceration for the surface and then we need to look for look sorry look for the nipple retraction or any discharge has been seen and then hand by it we ask the patient to uh, place their hand by the head and then come forward so in this hand by eight position they we, they'll show the maximum uh, maximum contraction of the breast so the if there is any bulging would be more prominent to our eyes and then by bringing forward the breast that we can if there is any mass so the breast come forward so it'd be a positive sign as well and then beneath the breast we need to check for any infection uh, under underneath the breast and then the next one is ask the patient to actually do a nipple press so for the nipple press we look for the discharge because the color of discharge is very important uh, the usually the purulent color would be seen in mastitis or breast abscess if there is any green color so on so far would be ductal ectasia and then if there is any bloody discharge would be would be suggestive for breast carcinoma and then for the inspection as well uh, if the surface uh, looks like kind of uh, eczema so on would be suggestive of pages disease 
which is uh, which is which contains underlying breast carcinoma so these are the questions we need to ask for the inspection next one is about palpation so for the palpation we are actually ask the patient whether they are in a 45 degree uh, position or sitting position better in a uh, convenient way so we're going to palpate the four quadrants of the breast so we have divided here the breast into four quadrants and then we will palpate around the areola area as well so before we start palpating, we ask the patient whether they got any pain and the superficial palpation, uh, would be, would, it would be like we look for the temperature, how it feels warm or cold and then look for any tenderness for the deep. It's actually like uh, kind of usual for the uh, palpating uh, any swellings. We start from the side, where's the side and number of swellings, how's the size and surface uh, and then we look for the consistency and then shape margin attachment to the skin or muscles and how the mobility and once done with the palpation we shouldn't forget about the limb nodes so we'll, we'll palpate for the cervical and axillary limb nodes as well so these are the pulp uh, these are done for the physical examination and come to the investigation part so investigation every breast swelling need to go through this these three uh, important assessment clinical ultrasound or mammogram fnac or biopsy Besides this, other relevant systemic in investigation should be in our mind as well. But then these are the three prime assessments. So I've divided here how the findings for the each uh, each breast pathology, starting first with fibroadenoma. So for the fibroadenoma, usually in our mammogram, it looks like a popcorn calcification. <laughs> And if you see under the ultrasound, it looks like a hypoechoic mass with shadowing because due to the mass, there is a shadowing would, could be seen and then the, the margin would be well defined. <coughs> Next one is fibrocystic disease. So for the fibrocystic disease, the uh, under the mammogram, it looked like a hello sign. <coughs> And then for the ultrasound, it looked like an anechoic en enhancement. We can see acoustic enhancement because due to the fluid inside. And then it is well-defined margin as well. <coughs> Next is about the ductal ectasia. Usually we do the mammogram to exclude, exclude the malignancy. And then under the ultrasound, it looks like a dilated duct. And the wall would be thick and ill-defined. It is an hypoechoic mass with, uh, we can see, micro calcification as well. <coughs> Next is about uh, abscess and mastitis. Uh, we cannot proceed with mammogram due to the painful condition. We usually do the ultrasound only. So it is large, multi-loculated and hypoechoic collection can be seen. <coughs> and then come to the breast carcinoma. So we need to focus uh, so much time over here because it is very important to rule out the breast carcinoma in that patient. So we usually do the TNM staging for the breast carcinoma to look for stages uh, once diagnosed with the breast carcinoma. Otherwise, for the mammogram, we can see a speculated mass and then with branching calcification. <coughs> and ul in ultrasound, it looks uh, as a speculated mass as well, it would be irregular and hypoechoic mass. <coughs> And then for the cornido, we need to do the cornido biopsy as well, all the condition. But focus on breast carcinoma, we usually focus on cornidoil biopsy compared to the FNAC because this FNAC cannot differentiate between the invasive carcinoma and compared to the in situ carcinoma. So that's why it's, uh, we usually do the cornidoil biopsy. And moving forward with the management of the patient with, uh, uh, with each breast pathology, for the fibroadenoma would be like a conservative one. We usually check for six months. And we if there is any larger, I mean, it's getting larger or remain unchanged for the, for the whole period of uh, follow-up, we can do a surgical excision. The methods would be lampectomy, cryoablation, and percutaneous suction. And for the fibrocystic, we usually uh, spread the fluid if there is pain present with the patient. Okay. And then if there is any blood stain in the in the aspiration, we can send for the cytology. And next is about ductal ectasia. Ductal ectasia we usually do a conservative treatment and with antibiotic. If there is any major duct involved, if we have seen in ultrasound, we can proceed with a surgical excision. Lactating mother, mastitis and abscess, so we, we usually drain the pus with an prescribed antibiotics, fluxoxolin, usually prescribed. And the re difference in uh, mastitis and abscess is, in mastitis, we usually uh, ask the patient to continue feeding in the same uh, affected breast. But in abscess, we usually uh, 
not advise the patient to uh, continue feed with the affected breast okay uh, in both condition we need to provide uh, breast support as well coming to the breast carcinoma which is our which is our major concern so there are several methods to deal this breast carcinoma the first one is actually surgery which is more more likely to be conducted in every patients and the first one is modified rectal mastectomy and the next one is radical mastectomy if we do not remove the breast uh, I mean we need to preserve it if there is condition of ductal carcinoma in situ or stage 1 or stage 2 of breast carcinoma and then uh, axillary node clearance we need to check whether we are going to clear the axillary node or not based on the sentinel node involvement so we usually uh, inject blue dye uh, during the during the surgery if there is any involvement of the sentinel node it, it will be turned blue and then we need, we remove it if not we just preserve it okay next is breast reconstruction if the patient uh, need to reconstruct the, her breast it, it need to be done immediately and within less than in one year okay next is chemotherapy adjuvant and neoadjuvant therapy adjuvant is after uh, surgery neoadjuvant before the uh, before the surgery and then hormone therapy receptor based and then radiotherapy usually focus on lymph nodes so what are the prognosis bad or poor prognosis patients with breast carcinoma is actually at one stage or involvement of four positive limb node lymphovascular invasion and incomplete treatment has been done so these are all about a patients with breast swelling the i mean the common questions we need to ask investigation and then finally management that's all thank you